Now, graphs and maps you'll see mainly on areas like geography, economics, and civics. Okay? Economics, they might show you a graph, a uh, supply and demand curve, like we talked about before. What would a supply and demand curve look like? Who remembers from uh, the other day? Oh, it would look like inside itself. Yeah, you start out with something like that, and then one line will represent supply going up like that, and that'll be labeled probably S. Okay. The other curve will be labeled D for demand. So supply and demand curve kind of goes like that. That's an example of a graphic, and you'll see questions like that on uh, economics, the economics part of the test, or the civics maybe, and uh, that, that's where you find that type of problem. So supply and demand, okay, and at some point always on these graphs you'll have a point where they cross, and that represents some kind of meaningful information. What, what might this mean where supply meets demand? What could that mean? What's happening there? Yeah. Where supply and demand were the highest? Where they met? Where they're the highest? Where they met, that's that's true. This is where they meet. What does it mean though? What's happening in an economy? Let's say you sell I think it's everything is good when it's like you sell shoes and we're your customers, right? So the supply for shoes is going up like this and demand might be going down. And here's where they meet. What's happening with your shoe supply and the customers that are buying the shoes at this point here? It's all perfect. Everything is balanced, right? So this represents a point of balance where your supply for the shoes and your demand for the shoes is about equal okay, at that point. Now at some point after that, demand might go way down, which might drag your, um, your supply down too, because you're not going to make as many shoes uh, if people are not buying them in the quantity, quantity that they bought before, right? If they stop buying, a pair of shoes every month and then they start decreasing their spending habits and now they're buying only one pair every three months now you're not going to make as many shoes right okay and that's that's all economics is really about when you're testing for uh, that part of the test it's interpreting the information that, that they give you so these are the main components on the test that you're going to see you're going to see a little bit of world history you're going to see a little bit of US history you're going to see economics, geography, civics, and government. Okay. So uh, this is you know, what you have to prepare for to be ready for the GED. And you saw some of that on the first practice test. Okay, and this one, the real one, is going to be roughly double that size.